Hello, N4HNH here. This video is aimed at those of you who participate in SOTA, summits on the air, uh, you know, hiking up to mountaintops, making contacts, and uh, getting points and trophies for that. And of course, it's a great way to practice off the grid communication. So even if you're not into SOTA and you're interested in that, then you may want to watch this video. Um, you know, we, we use battery power, solar power, things like that, and uh, antennas that are easy and, and quick to deploy and also are light because we are hiking up a mountain with everything in a backpack. So um, I, the radio is my FT891, which I've been using now for nearly three years for summits on the air. And um, I'll show you here in just a second what I power it from. So right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at a way to uh, downsize. I do have a, a QRP CW rig on order um, from LNR Precision. I'm debating whether I might cancel it or not because they it's a 20, 30, 40, and 80 meter radio, and I'm really been, I've been asking them for two years for a 20, 30, 40, and 60 meter because here in the southeast we get a lot of mileage out of 60 meters. Uh, just that it, it it the range on it is just perfect for. Uh, so, soda and being able to work our friends here in the southeast but you know even still I want to be able to continue to use the FT891 sometimes you know for sideband contacts and such so I've been looking at some ways to reduce weight you know when you're when you're hiking uh, one of the very first things that I learned uh, Joel KC4WZB uh, mentioned to me uh, you know that uh, hey once you get doing this a little bit you're gonna realize that ounces are pounds so we're always looking for ways to lighten our load. So I'm going to show you over here uh, what I normally use for a, to, as a power source for this radio. And those two guys there. That's a 6 amp hour Bio NO uh, Life Po 4. And this is a 3 amp hour. Um, this is the model number BLF1206A. That's BLF1203A. I get about a hundred contacts out of that. Um, we'll say you know plus or minus sideband, uh, sideband, and that was in cold weather. Um, you know, and if you if you know what I mean, cold weather can affect a battery's uh, ability to perform. Uh, so I get about fifty contacts off the three amp. Of course, makes sense, right? Hundred off this one, fifty off that one. So I've been, you know, exploring some options. I've got some batteries that I have had for years. Uh, that I used to use for airsoft rifles. And here's one right here, that 3000 milliamp hour. Now it's 11.1 .1 volts, and I will tell you, they charge up to over 12 volts. And, um, you know, so I was wondering, you know, what's the rate, how's the radio gonna perform if I'm running it as it gets down into the, you know, 10 and a half, 11 volt range, what have you, uh, you know, under 12. But uh, I wanna show you something on that battery. It, <laughs> Let me see if you can see that uh, 150 amp burst, 75 amps continuous. So it's definitely got the uh, the uh, juice now. And and if you're still if you're learning electronics, you're working on getting your ham license, and a lot of this is new to you. Let me let me uh, show you a little something here. See that's 3,000 milliamp hours. This battery here, which is a little bit lighter than that smaller BioNO, delivers 3,000 milliamp hours. Well, three amp hours, the bio -inno there, that's 3,000 milliamp hours. If you move that decimal three places to the left, that becomes 3.000 amp hours. So this battery, this LiPo battery and this LiPo 4 have the equivalent capacity. So I could pick either one. Now this one is going to charge up to, uh, you know, over 13 volts, where this one is going to uh, charge up to a little over 12 volts. So now let's look at power consumption. I've got my little power works meter here in line that's showing volts, watts, amps, and uh, so you look at here it's, it's drawing 0.93 amps right now on receive and that's about right. A Yaesu FT891 draws um, uh, about one amp on receive when you're running all, you know, when you get it actually like running it in a car, or getting it up to, you know, 13, 13.8. Um, I will show you right quick what I did in the menu. Let me get back over here, straighten this up a little bit. 
I'm not going to dwell on this part. I just want to show you a little something. I'm going to go into the menu, long press the function button, and uh, the dimmer. Okay, I've got it on three, honestly, because so it doesn't wash out <laughs> the. Uh, if it's too bright, it's, it's you can't read it on the camera. But uh, but honestly, the three setting is not bad for the dimmer. Uh, as far as power consumption, because if I run it up to let's say eight or nine here, it'll go to fifteen. Uh, look at the power consumption. It's going to get up to 0.9495 flickering there. So, okay, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, consumption, or uh, I should say conservation in uh, running the dimmer down. And in all honesty, I can see it at three. I have discovered that four doesn't really make much difference. So you can run it at four if you're more comfortable uh, with four. Uh, it's still 0.93 whether I've got it on, on, um, three or four, but I can, I mean, you can just look at the brightness and know that that's got to be drawing a little bit more current on four. Okay, so that's, that's power consumption on receive. Let's go up here to the higher menus where we get to the power output section. And let's take a look at, there we go, HFSSB power. So I have been running mine on 45 watts and the reason is I watched a video before I ever bought the radio when I when I was considering it for soda and uh, the, in the video the guy had done some measurements and he said below 48 watts the radio no longer conserves energy and, and, and it kind of makes a little bit of sense because the transistors the finals are biased for a hundred watt output because this radio is capable of a full 100 watts of output and um, so I just kind of, okay, so I said, well, okay, then I guess I'll run mine at 48 or maybe even I'll just settle at 45. So I did, just in case mine varied a little bit. Maybe there was a little bit um, less power consumption even at 45. So tonight I decided to just challenge that assumption. And I've got my uh, Autech computing watt meter over here, which I've found to be extremely accurate. I've got a dummy load set up. And uh, now we'll, I will show you that this, this uh, LiPo battery has not been charged in about five years. And I've already been running some tests here. So uh, it actually started out at 12.28 volts. And so, uh, you know, you want to keep an eye on, uh, on voltage. I'm going to probably carry this with me as I'm on a mountaintop because LiPo batteries, unlike BioInnos, the BioInnos will turn off and protect themselves. LiPo, LiPos will not. And so I'll carry this uh, meter with me here because I don't want it to drop below uh, the minimum voltage that it should per cell. But I think that the radio will probably, you know, diminish a good bit before that happens anyway. So let's take a look at what kind of performance we get. I apologize with the camera, but let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. I'll lean that up like that. So you can see the watt meter and the, and the amp meter there. And I'm, I'm set at 25 uh, watts. I'm on um, 60 meter band transmitting into a dummy load. And that, that watt meter is set on the 200 watt scale. And that is hitting right at about 25 watts. Now let's look at the current consumption. Okay, now that's a tone. Let me just talk a little bit, and you can kind of get an idea of where it's flickering to while I'm talking. And, uh, you know, we're looking, and I, granted, that's probably not the greatest meter to do this with, but we're getting some good relative numbers there. So somewhere, hello, a little over 7 amps on a steady tone. And when I'm just talking, we're looking somewhere in the seven, uh, 6 amp range. All right, now I'm going to change it. I'm going to go up to... 45 watts, which is what I've been running. Hello, and there it is. It's, it's um, not quite giving me the 45, and that's probably because the voltage dropped. But it was earlier. In fact, it was right on it. But let's look. Well, a little over 9, and that's what I saw before. Uh, so 9 amp uh, current draw there. And I'm going to go down now to 15. So 
So a little over seven, let me do a little talking. One, two, one, two, hello, one, two, one, two. So we're looking at somewhere around six amps while you're talking. Somewhere just shy of six amps to a little over six amps. Hello, but with a steady tone, it's getting up closer to seven, six and a half, seven. So now let's try 25. Okay. So getting close to eight amps at 25 watts on a tone whistle. And now I'll just talk one, two, hello, one, two, CQ Sota, CQ Summit's on the air. So let's see, we're hovering somewhere in the 6.8, six and a half, hello, hello. So we'll get up to, yeah, between seven and a half and close to eight when I'm uh, holding out a tone. Hello, one, two, but just normal talking. And granted, again, this meter's probably not fast enough to see every peak, but we're getting an idea here that it's definitely, um, uh, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of six amps while I'm talking, and, and maybe sometimes up to about six and a half. Now I'm going to go to 30. Just kind of a little bit between the 45 and the 25. Hello, so 8.28. So we're getting up over eight amps. I think it hit 8.29 there once. Hello, hello. Now just a normal uh, talking. One, two, hello, one, two, test one, two, test one, two. So it looks like we're at somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, six and a half, seven amps or so. Hello, hello. So we can hit eight on a tone. So just a quick guess at that. It looks like 25 or 30 is, is fairly efficient here as far as consumption versus uh, power. Now I'm going to try this on CW. Uh, let me let me get out of here. I've got CW currently set on 15. Let me get over to the CW channel. There we go. And I've got my uh, radio. I've got my uh, key uh, radio set for a um, straight key. Seven and a half. Um, and that's at 15 watts. See, see CW is going to punish a battery. <laughs> I mean, you're transmitting a full carrier. You don't have that, that uh, lesser duty cycle like you do with sideband. So uh, you got to take that into account when you're operating CW. But anyway, just for grins, I'm going to go back into the menu and try some different power levels. I'll go up to 25 8.6 and let's see when the battery was fresh I did that earlier I did this same test earlier the battery was uh, more fresh and it was 8.8 .8 at 25 let's see what is it 30 8.7 oh, that can't be let's see 8.5. Yeah, about eight and a half. So uh, as the battery has dropped some, it has uh, the twenty, the thirty watts is now. I'm set on thirty. Okay, let me just show you though the watt meter. I'm only getting twenty now, twenty one, because my battery has dropped. So let's see. Let me go down to fifteen again. Fifteen, and at fifteen, I'm really only getting about eleven or twelve. 7.42 so 7.42 so for another uh amp a little more than another than an amp i can bump it up to 25. Uh, granted these power levels will all increase as the battery uh, voltage is higher so here we are at 25 again which is really only producing about 21 and that is an 8.3 so just to give you some ideas on what your current consumption would be. In, uh, now, granted, on CW, you're not going to sit there and transmit a straight tone like that. You're turning it on and off. So that's a worst-case scenario there. But CW's duty cycle is still worse than sideband. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so I hope you found that interesting. Um, I'll go ahead and give you what I got earlier with a fresher battery on CW. It was 40, 45 watts was 10.6 amps. 
30 watts was 9.25, 25 watts was 8.8, .8, 20 watts was 8.3, and 15 watts was 7.5. So, you know, again, 15 watts, 7.5, 20 watts, 8.3, 25, 8.8. .8. Didn't cost a whole lot to go from eight from 20 to 25 watts, but from 25 to 30, also didn't cost a whole lot from 8.8 .8 to 9.25. And from 30 to 45, went from 9.25 to 10.6. So, you know, you can look at it and say, well, there's a point of diminishing returns. And I can tell you, below 15 watts, it doesn't, it's not efficient at all. It, it, the, the current doesn't drop significantly. But, um, you know, if you're strictly looking at, I just need to conserve my battery as much as possible, you probably want to stay... Um, in that 20 to 25 watt range, uh, and maybe even consider 15 for C for especially for CW. All right, so I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Um, thank you, Patreons, for helping me keep the channel alive. Uh, if anyone else would like to help with that, it's uh, go to www.patreon p a t r e o n dot com slash n four h n h, and uh, that'll help out the channel. Help me keep doing this. And, um, but if you can't do that, at least subscribe. I, 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 I'm understanding that when I get up to a thousand subscribers, YouTube will start um, paying a little bit. It's, it's a trickle, I guess, but you know, every, every little bit helps. So I hope you found it interesting. Uh, and let me just say 73 from N4HNH.